Mr. Amale, you have mute your, your speaker. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, ma. I hope we enjoyed the night and we were able to yes, look at, have a review of what we did yesterday. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. Indeed. Are you standing, Mr. Ress, or you are walking? I'm, I'm, I'm going to the office. I want to sit down. <laughs> they have opened the place. Sorry, ma. Okay, I'm there now, ma. Okay. Uh, and outside was even bright. We are seeing you well. I hope your office will be bright. I hope it is. Is it the window now? Maybe the. Uh, we are we are seeing you more. So we are seeing, more, we are seeing you more when you were outside. Exactly. <laughs> now it's dark. We are no more seeing you. It's like yesterday. Yeah. Okay. The other, is, the other is wrong. Uh, okay, man. I can, I can see you. Your own is very bright, man. But your own is not bright. We don't see your face. He, he says he knows. He knows because you uh, see himself. Like now, I can see myself. I'm, I'm okay from where I'm speaking from. Uh, you are okay. Yes, are, you you not, are you not seeing yourself? Yes, I am. Is it bright where you are? It's not very bright, man. Where is the weather? Is, the weather is, is it the weather? Here it's raining in Abuja here. Uh, yeah, there's no light. It's not brought the light. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Once okay, again, you are welcome to the class for this morning. And like I told us yesterday, we are continuing with talk. Uh, EDP 912. And before yes, we end the class yesterday, I gave an assignment that you should scan yes, around to know what is happening in your own environment, your area that has to do with uh, educational uh, planning and come up with yes. a topic. I don't know if you have done that. I did, I, I did something, man. Okay, you're going to present it to us shortly. And when the presentation mode is that, you will tell us the problem that is there. You tell us okay. you have come up and how that topic is going to help to solve that problem that has been identified. Then we're going to find out whether either government or there is already a work in that line. I mean, it's the topic we are working on. Has there been something that has been done already? Are there policies that are following it up? And why I mention this, let me quickly remind us, you should go to your course page because the course page for this particular course has been set up, like what I sent to you, if you saw it. And okay. I saw uh, Omale now was just typing. I don't want to enter because we are matured class. When I say chat, chat is different from main academic work. Chat, like you want to do, no, you're not chatting and how you normally do your social chatting. Because if you go to that page, you have a place for chat and you have a place designated for discussion forum. What is designated for discussion forum must be discussion forum. It's stated there, you will see. So please, let's obey the rules. And let's contribute as requested so that, because like I put there, the discussion forum will form, form part of our assessment. So let's okay. ensure that we are doing it the way it ought to be. So if we do that, it will help us a great day. Now, going to what we did yesterday, who want to recap for us the main thing that we took away yesterday? as per seminar. You know, we did an introduction yesterday. Who wants to recap for us? Um, about, uh, about, uh, okay, Mr. Mbale, go on. No, continue, continue. Continue, Mr. Mbale. Uh, Prof, uh, to those, give us an overview of the logic part of what is the of us. 
I think what I took away basically is that uh, in uh, preparing for this seminar, it can be uh, theoretical, it can also be that you can use the data or can use primary data in our research, in our seminar. And also, we just to look around our environment and see if there is any particular problem that we can that we can uh, we can we can talk about uh, releasing it to our field as a, as a, as planners. I think also she asked us and we discussed about the seminars we have gone to before and the areas that we have mentioned, which we did, and from there. Then we can to pick up something and uh, and do that by tomorrow, by, by today to we'll present what we, we have done. She also talked about the the first part and she let, made us know that the background to the study is very very important. She gave an overview of what she meant by the background to the study. After which she asked us to come up with something which we will present uh, this morning. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Do you have something to add, Mr. Mali? Uh, nothing like the party just said now. I was uh, uh, not with you people when that was uh, discussed. And notwithstanding, uh, you were able to let us know yesterday as well uh, how a seminar, what is seminar, and how it's going to be presented. That seminar is supposed to be a, a, a forum whereby people will learn new ideas, new things, new skills where people improve their knowledge, not necessarily coming together and at the end it becomes a boring forum. That a seminar should have a topic, in fact, a, a prevailing topic, I mean, the current things that are happening within our environment and to see how, uh, uh, how relevant that seminar topic will be, uh, looking at the policy, the problems and the solutions uh, to be provided to such a, a problem within our society. Majorly, it said, any time we are presenting a seminar, it should be, number one, a, a, an attracting, an attractive topic, a topic that is current, what is happening, and also it should be a forum that we are to educate one another, not necessarily uh, maybe the person, people listening to you, they are not aware of the happening, but you bring new things, new ideas, new innovation. I think that's part of what you told us yesterday. Okay, thank you very much. At least we had something that we took away. As a wrap-up and as a reminder, it's just to let us know that seminar, first and foremost, is academics. And that is why you can work on it either on theoretical basis or using empirical study. Yes, and yesterday I explained the difference between empirical study and theoretical study. If you are doing empirical study, it means you're going to use statistical analysis that will enable you to draw inferences and so on. And this will take you into proper study whereby you may administer questionnaire, you may use survey, you may use uh, interview, you may use different techniques to gather your, um, your data. But if you are using theoretical, the theoretical is that you are hinging on what is already in existence. But why you hinge on it, at the end, you wrap up and still come up with a position. You take a position on the long run. So what do you do? You don't just speak, like I used the word yesterday, like a journalist. No. Even though it's a theoretical, what you do is that means you will have a lot of work already done. Uh, literature review, a lot of them, and such literature review should be empirical. That means you go for already conducted empirical studies to find out what their findings were. And from what their findings were, you cannot take a position because from there, you can do your own explanation, <coughs> excuse me, and come up with your own uh, position. So that is theoretical. And like I did mention, for a seminar, theoretical is well welcome. But you must have done a lot of um, research on it that will give us a good knowledge and a good position. Now, let's cite example. Let us look at um, the school feeding program. Let us assume somebody wants to come up with a theoretical paper on the school feeding program. What will you do is for you, first and foremost, 
look out for the policy, look out for the, the policy from the policy would have stated the aim, the goal, and whatever the school program is going to achieve and how they're going to do it. And having done that, you now go, there are other documents you can equally get to show what the success so far of school feeding programs. So when you do this, you discover that you are going into a theoretical review. And some people may have carried out an empirical study and they have come up with their findings. So if you're able to gather those empirical studies that have been done already with the findings, you discover that you have, you will have a lot of things to discuss. And in that search, you discover that you'll be able to even cover a wide range because in the same study, the same focus, somebody may have carried it out in the North, another person would have done that research too in the South, another person would have done similar research in the East. So when you are now doing your, um, the theoretical review, you already have existing study with your findings to work on. So that is another, so two ways you could go about it. You can go theoretical, you can go empirical. These are the two ways. And like I mentioned again yesterday, that sometimes seminars too could be commercialized. And even when it is commercialized, you must still do your research before you go in to let people know, okay, this is the new thing. For example, let's use the case of Ebola. When Ebola broke out, people never really thought of it until when it broke out. And since then, people have been working. And somebody may come up with seminar. You want to educate people. You want to share new ideas, new knowledge of how Ebola cases can be handled. And based on that, what would you have done? You would have done a lot of research to toe the line that you want to carry out. And in this regard, you may not necessarily go into empirical research. You would have gone into researches that have been carried out in the past, are present, and you reconcile and come up with a position. So that is theoretical. I think with that, I believe we have been able to review the main thing we took away yesterday. But however, I think there is an aspect I have not mentioned. I did mention yesterday too, that when you are to choose your seminar topic, what do you do? You should scan around your environment. You scan around your environment. Because if you don't know, the, as you don't identify the existing gap, then your seminar presentation may not really add value. Yes, it could be entertaining, but there are times it may not add value, but just entertaining. But we need something that will add value. That is why it's academics. Something that will always add value for us. So yesterday, before we parted, I did mention that uh, gave us an assignment to go back and scan around our environment. Let's find out the prevailing challenges that are there. Therefore, the prevailing challenges Let's see the one that affects educational planning and pick a course, uh, sorry, a topic, choose a topic or create a topic that will suit what you want to find out. Because if you are having challenges, then you know what is missing, the gap. So if you're able to identify the gap, you'll be looking for how to meet with that uh, gap. So now I want to get the floor open. I wouldn't know who is ready to speak first now. Okay, maybe I will call this time around since uh, Ray spoke first. So I want uh, Mr. Omale to present what you have. You have heard what I said we should do. First and foremost, give us the scenario, the uh, analysis that what is happening. Let us know the background you are reviewing or the context you are reviewing. Are you working within a particular state, a particular, or your focus is on a particular group in the country? So what is wrong, what is lacking, and what topic are you choosing, and how is that going to work out? So the floor is open for you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Red over there. I want to start this way, that uh, it's another exciting and interesting for me once again for this semester. I thank God for giving me this opportunity to be alive and then to see every one of us once again. The topic I have in mind, just as Prof said, is a topic that... Uh, you see, uh, you're already deviating. You are not following our regulation, Dr. Mr. O'Malley. First and foremost, let us know your context. 
After we have know your context, now tell us the pro know your topic first. Tell us what is happening in your context. Then before you now go to the topic that you are choosing and why you are choosing that topic and how that topic will help in resolving the gap you have identified. Is it clear now? Very much clear, even from the beginning. Sorry for that deviation. Uh, I'm staying here in Abuja, and um, Abuja is located in North Central Geographical, North Central Geopolitical Zone of the nation. And Nigeria, as a whole, we have a sixth geopolitical zone. Uh, we have the one, one I want to look at is within my environment here, which I happen to fall in, in North Central Geopolitical Zone. And this North Central comprises, about, comprises of seven states. We have uh, Kogi State, we have Kwara State, we have uh, FCT, we have uh, Niger State, we have uh, Nasra State, and we have Plateau State. And uh, within these three, uh, seven states, we have seven federal universities. We have uh, six state universities, and we have 11 private universities. Yet, we are having problem of admission, a school enrollment, student enrollment. Yet, many of our students are not being admitted into these universities. It's called for concern, because the rationale behind the federal government coming to open up for everyone that has the ability and the interest to uh, start up a school is to see that the citizens have opportunity to be enrolled into the various level of schools, particularly the university which is which where I have interest in. We have challenges, and the question is, what are these challenges? Number one challenge is that while we People, the children, the students, the citizens, they don't have the opportunity whenever they, not all of them have opportunity to be admitted. For instance, year in, year out, you see jam, about over one million going into writing jam. Over close to two millions of citizens, they go into writing jams. And at the end of the day, how many of these students or prospective students uh, were able to be admitted. It called for concern that at times half of these students are not being admitted. The question is, are we not having the schools that, that are supposed to have, accommodate all the students? Are we not having the resources or the facilities or the human resources that are supposed to take care of these uh, students? We have, but they are not adequate. For instance, we talk of seven federal universities in these seven states. Out of this, you find out there are a lot of issues. Many of the people that actually want to be in federal universities, they don't have the opportunity. There are a lot of issues of whom you know, who will be able to help you out. And that's why many of our children are not in federal universities because it's meant for the big ones. And even the state ones, and the private ones, because of the funding, the money, they will call it private cost, is so, is so, so high that many of our citizens, they don't have the money to be able to send their, their awards to either the states or private universities. And apart from the funds, the money, the resources, we could have the problem or the facilities that at times the government, especially the federal government, the structures on the grants are not enough. And at times they applaud admitted students more than the capacity they ought to be admitted. But for the states and private investors, some of them are just glorified secondary schools. They don't have the facilities. They don't, have, they don't have the human resources. 
I, I mean, what I mean, they don't have the human resources. I'm talking of qualified human resources, both academics and non-academic staff. And so it comes for concern for us to look into this. How do we now solve this problem? It's a, it's a challenge because most of our children are going abroad. And the, the question is, why are they going to school elsewhere? Why we have our own here? Because of lack of infrastructures, because of lack of human resources. We have brain, brain drain every year. And uh, I understand that there are researches that have been taken or carried out before now. One of those areas they covered before now, they looked into the fundings of the school and the human resources, which are, are of course is one of the basis for accreditation of any school or any university. But they have not dealt with the issue of the private costs. They have not dealt with in detail, the issue of the funding, and they've never dealt with in detail the issue of human resources. So why should I now allow this to continue? You see, I think I have to go on researching how, number one, we can solve this problem. The problem of not admitting our students that are ready and they are qualified to be admitted. And that is why I feel I have to choose a topic to, uh, to see how our children that are qualified and applied are being admitted, either into federal university or state university or private universities. And then I choose this topic that I want to say it now. The topic which I I'm interested in is an investigation, an investigation Are we together? We are listening to you. All right, an investigation into private cost fundings, human resources as determinants to university enrollment in North Central Geopolitical Zone of Nigeria. We want to see, are these three independent variables, are they, are they the determinants that will determine how many students are to be enrolled? How many students are to be enrolled into either federal university State university or private universities. Of course, we talk of private costs. We are talking of the cost being incurred either by students or their parents or their guidance. And this cost includes school fees, examination fees, uh, feeding, transportation and all such more, or house, uh, house renting. And then we'll talk of funding, talking of the money allocated to a particular school or institution to run the program. Uh, it could be running the program, having the infrastructure needed on the ground, going into the material, the equipment needed on the ground, and into laboratory equipment. It could be library equipment, uh, lab library equipment of materials. The funding, as we all know as Nigerians, is always inadequate for the school to successfully run and then to do well. For instance, when you look at the budget of this year, Nigeria budget, we had 9.56 thousand US dollars. That is into three launch. But then it is not enough because when you look at the universities and look at what they have on the ground to solve with money, that money is always not adequate. So there's a problem there. Then those people that have private schools, 
private universities, the human resources they have, many of them are not qualified, either academic staff or non-academic staff. It's called for concern. Some of them open the universities or schools just for, to make profits. Profits. They are not concerned about the aim of education, which is to impart knowledge or skill or the experience needed for the citizen or the nation to grow and to develop. They are not after that. And so we have to look into it critically. And that's why I picked this topic once again. Now we have seen the problem. We have seen the problems. What are going to be the a way out? I, I should be of opinion, I'm of the opinion that number one, federal governments, state governments, private in, private in, private citizens or individuals should try as much as possible to donate funds that run the schools and also to award scholarship to those that are qualified so that especially those in the education because when you look at how the scholarship in this country is being awarded there are a kind of segregation they look at all the, the so-called so-called called areas they give scholarship to medical doctors they give scholarship to lawyers or doctors they give scholarship to accountants or those in accounting or those reading medicine or those uh, those that want to become lawyers but always neglect those in education faculty so it's of my opinion that government should try as much as possible to spread their awarding of scholarship to all citizens that are qualified for it. And instead of bugging students too much, students are equally having it so hard. The universities are on their own. They should look around how to sort funds, how to generate funds, apart from these school fees, apart from all the exam examination fees that actually is on the high every year, they keep on increasing. I suggest, or I will suggest rather, that universities, either federal universities or state universities or public or private universities, they should look for a way of sourcing funds. And one of the ways is that they have, some of them have structures that are line wasting or structures they are using and they are not using to the full capacity. Okay, thank I, you. Can you wrap up now? Wrap okay, up. yes. Yeah. Mm. All right. So I suggest that they should look way around to search for funds and uh, to see that they have the qualified human resources, both academic and non academic staff. And they can only do that if they have the funds. So there should be enough funds to be allocated during any year budget to serve and to cater for education. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Can you come say your topic again? An investigation into private cost funding and resources. Into private cost funding and human resources as determinants. Take it easy. Funding okay. and human resources. Mm -hmm. yeah. As determinants. Mm -hmm. to university school enrollment. Okay. In North Central Geopolitical Zone. In Nigeria. Okay. Are you true? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Rice, where are you? Hello, ma'am. Can you hear me? We can hear you. We are not seeing Hello. you. Now, I, I don't know. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I can hear you, ma'am. OK, now critique what uh, Omale has presented. 
you can see it on the screen. That is the topic for Mali, and you heard all that he said, so I need your comments. Okay, I, 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 I think the first comment I want to, I want to make there is that uh, from what we learned last semester, if I'm correct, that the researcher uh, should be should be neutral, should not should not have a conclusion before carrying out the research. For me, it seems as if he has concluded and uh, he has made several assertions about the private university before carrying out the research. I think he have left he have left the research to speak for itself, to do the assessment, and then uh, later on he can before he can make a uh, uh, recommendations. Then for me, uh, I want to look also at the at the feasibility of the of the research in terms of time, in terms of cost, with respect to geographical spread. I don't know how feasible it will be within the time frame that uh, that we are that we have been uh, that we have been given. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. What happened to your internet? We are no more seeing you. We already seen your name. I don't know. Uh, it says safe driving mode. I don't know. I don't know what the safe driving mode. Uh, driving mode. Let me see. I have what you wrote. Let me. You touch something. Then driving mode. Oh, maybe. Doesn't want the camera to show. So remove it from driving mode. Um, I'm trying to. Because I need the two of you in this class. I'm working on it, man. I will so log out and come back again because I need the two of you in the class. It's okay, man. It's okay. Man. If you were three, I would say okay. The other two will continue. Are you logging out? But prof, the size of the class, I hope it's okay by you. I need the two of you so that the class can be active. If I'm talking to one person, doesn't think you are two. Uh, uh, I really. what we are doing. So I need uh, your contribution. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Mr. Rice, are you there? Dog is batting. Mr. Rice, are you there? Uh, I believe that he's still trying to uh, learn how to use that um, uh, his new asset. Okay, like what he said, for me, what you presented was just journalistic. It was not academic. And you discover that you were moving rigmaroling, talking like the way any street person would talk. It wasn't academic. We didn't see a major thing that was academic. And from your presentation, you swift between access and quality in education. And looking at access, are we saying that nothing has been done? <coughs> because from your presentation, you mentioned that they have worked on funding. And what other things do you say they have done? Human resources. That, that is why they have worked on. And I disagree with you. Because access has been in the forefront. You are currently in National Open University of Nigeria. Can you tell me what led to the establishment of National Open University of Nigeria? 
Uh, one of it is because lack of access to school, to school, uh, either, uh, lack of access to university schools. So why will, uh, you that, say, why will you say that they have not done anything in the area of, and when you are talking about funding, and you're talking about thousands of students enrolling or taking jam, you didn't back it up with any figure, any uh, empirical something. At least from jam, you can say, well, in this year to this year, this number of people applied, this number of people were given admission, fine. Now, again, so much has been done, even with NUC. Have you ever heard about carrying capacity? Yes, ma'am. What does that imply when it comes to university admission? Uh, so my understanding, uh, when I talk about the capacity, we look at the number of students or staff that uh, each school has the capacity, has the structure to assume, I mean, to, 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 be, uh, to, to take at a particular section of the, at a particular section, sorry. So it could be maybe, for instance, uh, we have uh, 500 students that uh, apply for University no, of Abuja. Just, just hold on, because that is what I'm asking, because you were just jumping here and there. There was no focus. Because if there is, you have heard about carrying capacity, you would have known that, yes, that even as a federal government, they have been dealing with uh, access. So the only thing that would be new, if you are not coming up, and what led to private, the establishment of private university, do you know? Yes, ma'am. What led to it in uh, one sentence? Not too much story. To, to accessibility. What is that? It's to solve the problem of access. That was why federal government started giving license, even up to now, to private universities. Because if you are talking about admission, you must equally link it up with what the facilities there can carry. And you even discover that almost all the universities, especially states, the public universities, state and federal, the number of students that were planned for the available resources, they're already having far, far more than that number. And if you look at it, population is increasing as well. Population is not decreasing. So if we now have to look at access, you now have to come up with something you know we can use to solve the problem of access. And I think, uh, was it not when they were where they were drilling these people in the house, the newly appointed ministers, although they've not given them portfolio, I know they were asking the former minister of education, I think it was the former, they were asking somebody, Shah, that has to do with, uh, or something that has to do with uh, the university, and he mentioned that National University of Nigeria should be, should receive more funding and encouragement. Why? It's because they want to increase access. They want to increase access. So when you are talking about access, then you must be able to come up to look at what is already on ground with facts. You don't assume. You, if you look at what I wrote here on the screen, assertions, you know, when this... Uh, Res was reviewing your work because you're just assuming that something this that you don't talk like that as an academic and not for a PhD student. You must talk with facts. When you are building your background, you must build your background with facts. Then when you are done building your facts, because you now want to go into your research, you can say, well, it is assumed or it's likely you don't just conclude because you want to find out what is there. 
Now, if you want to look at private cost, is private cost actually the problem to access? If we want to look at it, except you now want to come in to say, we want to review because the aspect of access would have been okay. Since we are not able to have enough resources, because it's already clear that you don't have enough resources, both human and non human resources, that they are not enough to take care of the total number of students or applicants that are applying into university education on a yearly basis. So if now you want to advocate, okay, let us expand what we have in the open universities or let's consolidate instead of having few study centers, let's spread it let the, the federal government fund the internet, then you are coming to access in the area of funding. Now, if you look at private costs, the private cost will come in if the students, the schools are there, the capacity is there, we have facility to carry them, but the students cannot come in because they could not pay to uh, come in. Maybe as per school fees, Maybe they could not afford the school fees. Maybe they could not buy the books. Maybe they could not take care of other things they need to take care of. Or like we do know that, yes, in many of the uh, universities, you have to pay for accommodation, some rent houses outside the campus. Private cost is not coming in. Then when you look at the human resources, Say so as determinants, I don't know how human resources now, what you want to say, is it that because they are not enough? If they are enough, and let us do, you have them. And in the university, the what has been planned there is that the teacher-student ratio, because in the university, you have student-teacher ratio as well. And this goes for the different types of programs of study. So if we are looking for the resources, we say, oh, it's the resources that is depriving enrollment. The resources at this time, I mean the human resources, it's not what is depriving enrollment. From the environment where you and I live. If you are able to talk, if, talking about, okay, we need to beef up resources, Oh, we have enrollment, the students are there, there are so many, but you have one lecturer to 200 students to manage, then human resources will come in. But again, I will not shut you there. I will want you to tell us how you think funding, cost of funding, then human resources, how does it affect school enrollment? In five minutes, can you educate us on that? Thank you very much, Prof. Um, funding and human resources in any organized university, in any country, there's what they call accreditation. Forget any For country. Talk about the area, your context. How does Sorry, it appear? You, you have told us you have a contest. You are working on North Central. So tell us how the cost of funding and resource of uh, the human resources is affecting enrollment into university education in the North Central. Yes, ma. Uh, from my assessment, from what I found out, we have 24 universities. And private universities is dominating. We are, in fact, out of this 24, we have 11 universities, private. And uh, when we talk of funding here and human resources, uh, the private universities, they don't have enough money to have what they're supposed to have on the ground. They don't have enough money to employ qualified 
lecturers or now, qualified now come let's let me stop you here because you are having a lot of modeled up things is your focus on private university or public university or both and where are you going are you going to agitate that the federal government should be funding private university is that your motive no 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 that's not my no motive uh, my focus should be on these three on, on these three universities: the one owned by federal government, the one owned by the state government, and the one owned by the private individuals. And okay. my, yes, ma. My concern is that the both the federal, the state, and private in universities in my own area that I find myself that funding is a problem. And because they don't have enough funding, they will not be able to have enough structures to accommodate. Yeah, you just told us a short while ago about the capacity to absorb students. If we have enough space, enough structures, enough equipment, enough instruments or materials on any of the campuses, then more of the students will be admitted into any courses they want to, do, uh, to go through. But because they don't have funding enough, I'm talking of adequate funding, they are restricted to not to a few structures they have on the ground. They also have new, uh, more buildings, a large library, laboratory, and even uh, ICT. We are in the age of ICT. Go to many of these, even federal universities. You find you'll be disappointed that they don't even have a center ICT centers. And if they have it, it's just a glorified area. Nothing to write home, nothing to write home about. It's not working. I've been there when I was over there. We go to the university there. When you see many of the uh, uh, computers, but none is working. If I told there's one, few of them are working. They just there to, uh, to 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 deceive. I'm sorry to say that, so that they will get accreditation. Accreditation. So these are problems, and we need to, as 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 citizens of this country fight back to ensure that these things become things of the past. That's my area of concern. And uh, we cannot fold our hands to continue watching the way things are going. We need to do something. And the way out is this research I'm about to carry out. Publish it. People let people see it. And then they, 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 whoever that want to work with this, I believe federal government and state government at the end of the day, even private government, private individuals, they go through this research and be able to you know, adjust their seats. Are you done? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Now, when you talk about issue of funding, I don't know whether how much you have read. Inadequate fund, inadequate fund, it has been on for decades. Now, we are equally talking about inadequate funding as a means of restriction to access. That is why they cannot have enough infrastructure to carry the number of students that they need to cater for. Fine. Now, the question is, what is the direction of this, your research? To ensure that you are coming up with a new way of funding, that the funding will be there. That is where the research will be meaningful. That is where my focus is. Because every other person can just stand up and say, ah, inadequate funding, that is why this is inadequate funding. Teachers are not properly paid. You turn around, blah, 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 and the rest of them, fine. But what do you intend to bring out from this, your research? That when you say anybody that read it, if I read and what I am seeing in the work is that there is inadequate funding, you have not come up with a structure of how that inadequate funding can be resolved, then, what is going to happen? Because you, you already visualize where you are going. Then what you do in carrying out research, you now go for that if you are doing a empirical to sample it and see whether what you are thinking will actually fall in line in that order. So in this case, yes, there is inadequate funding. Agreed to an extent. I don't totally agree to that all the time. It's to an extent. So what, what is the new technique you want to bring out from your research? 
What is your focus? So say, if we do it this way, then the funding will improve. So what is your thinking? Are you just going to tell us what we already know? Yes, ma. Um, once again, thank you for giving the forum. Um, when you look at this particular inadequate funding, it has been there for even before I was giving birth to. But I'm looking a way out of this problem. And that's why I will be, I will assume or suggest that all universities, either federal, states, or private, should look inwards. There's what they call internal generated funds. Internal generated let me, funds. Let me stop you there again. A lot of people in the past have proposed internally generated funds. And because of that, a lot of universities went into a lot of things, including part-time programs, which they were using generating funds. And I will tell you that there were some universities even before this recent regime that could pay salaries even when the federal government have not turned in the salary from the eternally generated funds. So what difference has it made over the years? Because eternally generated fund is not new. It has been all. Universities were encouraged, some realm outfits, some Aito pure water production, bottled water production, which you know. Some have hotels, guest houses. Are you not aware? I'm aware, yeah. ma'am. Good. You see, we need to come up with something different. Like what me, I agitate for. I like your idea. I like your argument. I like the way you presented it. I agree with you that yes, if we have enough funds, we can expand the structures we have. I agree with you. But the aspect I am not totally in agreement with is how you are going to generate these funds. My area of concern is utilization of the available funds. Because I feel strongly that even the fund we have, if we utilize it well, we can still do a lot of things and even expand our structures, our resources, we can expand it. Do you know that in some institutions where they were doing eternally generated revenue, some staff backed out because they discovered that somebody somewhere was the one enriching maybe few hands or themselves enriching themselves with the so-called money internally generated. How many structures from this so much internally generated that most of our leaders in the institutions have come and said from the money we generated internally, at least we have state-of-the-art lab one lab we have put a state of the art. Because internally generated revenue has been so debated on for so long, and there is so much money from that. But what have they done with the money? Rather, yes, you internally generate, you will still be waiting for state government, or you are waiting for federal government to still bring in something. Now, when I told you that you bring in the aspect of quality, we are not looking at the human resources. In the aspect of the human resources, you discover that, yes, some of the personnel they are using here in these private schools, they are drawn from the regular universities. So by so doing, you are overstretching. The workload will be much, and it's likely to affect what you need to produce. And on the other hand, yes, there are some that are not qualified. They are having less than a PhD. And some of them, they are being used in the field that is not directly their area of specialty. How do we solve this? So I don't know whether 
my comments are making sense to you, Mr. Omali. More than sex, ma. God bless you. So look at it again. Because if it's just to generate funds, that has been overflowed for internally generated revenue. And I know that some years back, long time ago now, I did a paper on the differentials you have in allocations. They give you money. Nobody tells you to come and account on how you spend that money. What about the quality of infrastructure that are put in place? You see some infrastructure in our universities today that we have built maybe about five less within 10 years ago. Everything is already dilapidated. And you have some structure that have been built about 50 years, 40 years, and they are still standing well. So there is more to it that we need to look at when you are looking at access. Access, I want you to look inward again and see whether there's something else you cannot come up with. Yes, private cost. In that case, from what you explained now, it's not private cost. Are you with me, Mr. Omali? Yes, ma'am. From the cost you explain, the cost to build the infrastructure, are you looking for the private cost that they should increase school fees so that they will be able to build those infrastructure? Because what you have here, look at it, your cost is on private cost. Look at it here. Your emphasis is on private cost. And eternally generated money, it will not be private cost. So how do we reconcile that? I have a few minutes for you before I move over. Yes, yes thank you very much, ma. Um, the direction I was looking, or the perspective I was looking at private cost is from the area where some students, they have the knowledge, they, they have the interest, their brain, but because of the cost of the school fees, they deny the access of being a road into any of these universities. It could now, be either federal now, now, assumption. You say any of this university. How much is federal government charging? What I look at, uh, I took a uh, University of Abuja as my case study as at yesterday. I discovered that the uh, University of Abuja actually that is doing well because uh, school fees there is 42,000 naira as at yesterday. So I what at I want you to do, Mr. Omale, go and do more research. Okay, ma. Hmm? You can see what you are. This is just me alone. No? You are not mm. standing before the faculty members yet. You are not standing before mm. departmental member yet. Too. Mm. If I'm through with you, I know I'll be through with any new person. This is just me alone. And you could see that you from your transaction, you are just jumping here and there. So go and walk and come up with something more substantial. Now, thank you, you, Mr. Rez. Uh, uh, good morning, once again. Uh, I, entrepreneurship has to do with uh, identifying gaps and uh, business opportunities in one's immediate environment and bringing together the necessary resources in an innovative way to fill those gaps, bearing the risk involved and in the process gaining personal reward information is a variable tool in this regard to develop uh, entrepreneurs. Therefore, entrepreneurs need to be regularly reminded of the basic functional areas about their enterprise. Entrepreneurship has become a permanent inclusion in our vocabulary today. In government settings, we talk about entrepreneurship uh, all the time. Every time you hear of entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship. Now, entrepreneurship is not actually new to us in Nigeria or in Africa. If you look at the pre-colonial period, I, I feel in our little way, we are basically entrepreneurs. Like you look at the Edo area, there are carvings today, even in the British museums, they are there, and they are valuable works of art. I feel to understand that is good entrepreneurship. If you look at the, the those in the north, they had their granite pyramids and so on and so forth. But what went wrong is that during the colonial period, education came up. 
which itself is not bad, but the curriculum was actually geared towards uh, training assistants and clerks for the colonial masters. And that has been the focus of the curriculum for a very long time. Despite, even after the colonial masters have gone, the legacy they left behind, I feel, is still a problem. Why today's students, they focus more on getting jobs rather than becoming entrepreneurs. Of course, in the time past, it paid because uh, our fathers as clerks, uh, attitude has already been ingrained in most uh, Nigerians. So it has really become a problem in terms of the attitude, their belief of what do I do to, to, uh, to, to, to make it economically. Nigeria has a population of uh, 150 million, we are, we are told. There are those below 32. So having uh, most of these youths not having, that's according to the MBS anyway, the, not having this having job, it has led to so many problems. And we see the menace all around, kidnapping and, uh, and so on. However, the federal government has been doing its bit. They've tried to set up different uh, bodies to tackle this issue. Man has been set up. We have a Nigeria Association of Small and Medium Enterprise. We have NASIMA. We have a Chambers of Commerce and Industry, and so on, and, and so forth. But uh, it has not really solved the problem. But recently, we see that the government is looking towards the educational system. And uh, in line with the national development goals, and they looked at uh, the national economic empowerment and development strategy that is needs, even the MDGs and uh, the Education Reg uh, Regulatory Research Development Council, NERODC, is trying to restructure. And that's one of the reasons they came up with the basic uh, education and then the three years of education. And the major difference there is that they've now introduced entrepreneurship stroke skill acquisition. 35 subjects, areas have been brought up and have been included in the curriculum, made compulsory for every senior secondary student from SS1 to SS3, and to make sure they, they, they are serious with it, they take it at the secondary school level. Uh, some people have done some work on this particular area, and uh, what we, uh, what the work I really got impressed was done by OG in 2011, where he brought us some of the successful some things in fact that this thing would have would lead to, interruption would lead to. For example, we are told it's supposed to impart on new breeds of school leavers the spirit of enterprise and industry, as opposed to the old breeders who were looking for paid employment. Another focus of this introduction, we are told, is to prepare students for self-employment, for wealth generation and poverty elevation, then to promote occupational aspiration and job readiness to promote hands-on and work experience, to meet demands of the new global market, to enhance acquisition of functional skills, like planning, time management, leadership, and interpersonal skills. My takeaway from this curriculum is that it's not only to acquire skill, but to teach the business skills needed to succeed as an entrepreneur. And then, uh, in Delta State, where I intend to focus on, is an ordinary state. But for the last five years, the state government has had a focus, which they've talked about uh, moving away from oil, because, like we know, it's a non-renewable resources. They try to partner with federal government in uh, so many programs, like the Shaw program and so on. They've also worked with the UNDP, with Shell. We have the Youth Empowerment Project here. We have about four different skill acquisition centers. We have the YETI program here, that's the Youth Empowerment through Agriculture program, and so on and so forth. But from our studies, uh, from our observation, which I happen to be included in the perspective of most of these things, is that the same problem is there, the problem of this attitude. We've had uh, some of our graduates in the last two years, and you see them still leaving the entrepreneurship programs and still going to write jam and going for courses that will land them as admin staff. So it comes to mind that it's more than acquiring the skill, but actually it's, I, it, it, they need to look into 
the attitude that the youths have towards starting something on their own, towards starting something on their own. So is there actually a gap in the skill acquired by these secondary school students? Like in my own daughter's school, where I observe, the school has fixed uh, the courses for them. You can only do animal husbandry or data processing. Supposing the child has interest in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in coding. Supposing the child has interest in uh, other areas, tie and die. That person is, is short out. That keys the attitude, that keys the interest. So, uh, there's a gap in that because that's, that's what happens. The school that has to pick, is it the school picking for the student with that encourage entrepreneurship? The number one want to, they want to work and receive paid, uh, paid salary. Uh, they feel there's job, sec job security is better. The, 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 the ability to, to take risk, interpersonal skills, do they really have such skills? So I'm looking at, based on this one, I'm taking the topic, uh, an assessment, an assessment of uh, entrepreneurial skills and attitudes of secondary school students, uh, of senior secondary school students in, uh, in Delta State. I repeat the topic again, uh, an uh, assessment of entrepreneurial skills and attitude acquired by senior secondary school students for self-reliance. I, I thought to add that one, for self-reliance uh, in, uh, in, 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 in Delta State. And I hope that uh, at the end of this, uh, this research, what I come up with will not only help the state government, but we help curriculum planners to do a review and look at this issue of entrepreneurship subjects. So I will not go the way of the 6334 system because most schools now, they just get a teacher for animal husbandry or carpentry and they teach you the skill. But like you made me understand yesterday, there's a difference between skill acquisition and entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship goes beyond just getting the skill. There are other business knowledge that they need to know. How do I drop a business plan? How do I uh, feasibility studies and so on, which for now are excluded? So I do that research. I intend to, to, to do an empirical research to sample both the tutors, sample the students, and uh, relevant stakeholders to actually assess this, uh, the, the, the effectiveness of the program so, thus far. It began in 2011, so we have like nine years of this program running now. I have used enough time to do a bit of an uh, assessment using data as a case study. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mr. Res. We've listened to you. Mr. Mbole. Yes, ma'am. Do you have anything you want to say on that? Your comments? Yes. Uh, he has spoken very well, very soundly. Uh, but when he started up the discussion, I, it seemed to me, as I, maybe I did not hear where other did not mention his content, his contest, uh, where he is the prevailing challenges and the other before coming to tell us about uh, the entrepreneurship. I think that's where I think uh, he has to look into that. Maybe he said that anyway. I mean that not, but if you have not said that, uh, that's what you told us from the beginning. We should follow the rules and regulation regarding the discussion. Thank you very much, Mr. Ras. I, I, I think I did mention that. I, may, I, I think I did. I mentioned that the challenges uh, that we faced. Uh, maybe you were not. I think I mentioned. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Marley. Thank what you, What observed is right. You know, the way you went about it, you spoke uh, nationally. And when you are introducing such a thing, you have mentioned something, you have started talking, before you went back to tell us, oh, this thing has been on for a long, a long time, as far back as time in memory, fine. But you did not link it up to know, for us to know how it now came into education. You didn't link it. Now, I want to ask you a question. 
I want okay, to ma'am. ask you a question. Okay, ma'am. What is the role of an educational planner in what you are doing? Like we, we learned, educational planning covers several areas. What is the role the, here? Not several areas now, be specific now. Uh, I think to plan the initial planner will come up with the curriculum. The curriculum has, has to be broader. Is the, are, that you, are, you, are you the curric, Are you specializing in curriculum planning? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No, curriculum is a different field on its own. Because if you don't, you know, planning is very sensitive in the sense that yes, we plan, we go around all. But if you are not careful, somebody will just tell you, this is for the curriculum expert. You know you have PhD in curriculum studies. Okay. Do you know that? You yes, have PhD in curriculum I, I don't. It's okay. But what, where we need the curriculum expert to come in, the planner will plan it. That is okay. why when you are planning, you don't plan alone. You plan with the other experts in their different field. But the planner should be able to identify what needs to be done and what is lacking. Because from all your presentation, we didn't see where the planning was coming in. Even on the long last, you even mentioned that it would be useful to the curriculum uh, designers or planners, which is different from the educational planners. I would have expected to see that you are able to start what the education sector, if you are talking generally or you want to restrict it to secondary school, fine. What has been, how we started our educational system, you can even say, okay, as a country, we started from IFOMA and you were colonized, you now turn to the former system. However, during the IFOMA, these were the things that were on before the former system. And between this period and this period, this is what happened when the former system came in. Fine, because you are trying to now mention that at the middle of your statements. How it came in and what was the focus as at that time. The focus was liberal education. And with that focus, it now tailored our mind, changed the focus that we had before to have a paid job after school. Yes. Yes. So if you now get into that, when did the new orientation start at the gate? You have to let us know. At what point did the Nigerian government start thinking of entrepreneur? Something led to it. What led to it was when we are now having unemployment, high rate of unemployment. And you are trying to find out what led to that. So in this case, we would have been able to know that between this time and this time, yet when we started the liberal arts education and the rest of them, the rate of employment increased. People were living fine and the rest of them. But within this period, it was, you start mentioning the percentage as it was dropping. And having a lot of people unemployed, a lot of youth unemployed, you mentioned the percentage between this period and this period, then the federal government started looking for a way out and it anchored on entrepreneurship. Now, what is entrepreneurship? You will let us have, a, because these are backgrounds. So it's now the aspect you are looking at, how has it really fair? Because what you want to do is an assessment. How has it really fair? Bringing it into the form of secondary education. Can we say this, what we are doing now is different from the 6334? that was purely vocational. So what is entrepreneurship? So you now have to let us know a little bit of that. And what is operating now at the school levels? Now you let us have it, because that will help you build your background before you break your topics into a discussion headings, whereby you can now go and look for already research work, empirical study that have already been worked on, with findings and you bring them in. Now you mentioned skill, ability for you to write a, a business plan or 
learn how to carry out feasibility study. It's a scheme. Okay. You know, I told you that we keep using these things. There are terminologies that are, because these are areas you need to bring out if you are going to that. Terminologies that are used wrongly and we need to interpret our terminologies to really meet with what we need to do. Because in this regard, if you are talking about skills, we have what we call soft skills. Yes. Even the way you communicate is part of the soft skills you need to get. Your character is part of the soft skills. It's different from training for a vocation. If you are training for a vocation, it's different. So what you really need to do, if you are going into this, to assess what is on ground, then you cannot bring out that the focus of your paper is to assess and find out why over the years, because this thing has run over the years, it has not really yielded the fruit is supposed to yield. So when you do this, what will you not go on to do? You can raise some questions that other research work that have been carried out will help you to answer. It should not just be one or two. You would have searched at least a minimum of 10, 20, already carried out research with findings. Because it is what you, your focus is that will help you do that. Yes. When you are looking at vocation, vocation is very different. It's very different from just skill. Then if you now want to empower, empowerment, to help those that are having the ability to run a business, starting from micro uh, business, then it's a different thing altogether. So what is the focus? Because that is what I see that is lacking in the plan. Because when you are presenting your background, we must see the emphasis on the plan, the educational plan. It's from the educational plan again now that, yes, they are now bringing in uh, entrepreneurship into secondary school curriculum. And there is a purpose why that is being brought in. But the question is that, is it really meeting what is supposed to meet? Now, if you now want to combine, to say you want to do a mini research, fine. If you can, in this case, you must go and look for those students you feel you have trained in your skill acquisition, and they are still writing jam. We need to find out from them. Why are they writing jam? Because the responses you will get from them will be vital to restructure what we are doing. So, what things we could do? Instead of making it so wide, so open, you can even decide to have your focus on your graduates those that have turned out from that particular training you have been doing. And okay. your focus will be on those that have established, no matter how few they are, if you will have their records, I'm sure you have their email, you will have their contacts, that you yes. can send them, use them. You cannot find out from them, those that are into something from what they have learned, why have they gone into it. Don't be so surprised that some people just went into it because they felt there is no other option. It's not really that that is what they want. Which means any day there is an option in the area of interest they are going to pull out. And they may not be putting in their best because that is not really what they needed. Then you will find some that said yes, Daddy just said, or mommy just said, or my uncle or auntie just said, I should just go and do this. And other, I can, well, when the need arises, it's not really, I have pleasure in it. I don't like it. So from the feeling you will get from, okay, why is it that you didn't like, oh, this is not what I wanted to do this. Okay, why do you want to? So that feeling, you not come up with that, that feeling that you will get from there, their opinions is what will be relevant. Because you have already observed, because 
Your observation now might be wrong when you now go to the field. Correct. And it might be right. And it might be that the thing is not properly done the way it's supposed to be. That is why it's not yielding the result. But we need to not really come up and demarcate group what we really need to do. Don't be so surprised too that one or two of them may tell you, you see, where my idea is, I have idea, but I have not given the opportunity to utilize the idea. Look at, they are looking, do, uh, buy a drum. All these drums, they are important. It's what I can make here. That is where my interest is, not all this nail business or snail, whatever you have gone to train me on. My interest is not there. If I can be given tools, given the opportunity to do, I will come up with something bigger than drum that can fight, that can fly for this number of hours without being uh, the gas or anything getting exhausted. You don't be so surprised you will get that. Don't be so surprised a student will tell you, I read biochemistry and all these Ebola cases they are talking about. My interest is on research. If I have the right lab, I'm going to do something that all these things they are doing, we can. Don't be so surprised another student will tell you, I can manufacture organic fertilizer. Are you getting what I'm saying? But because they did not get what they needed. Yes, ma'am. So they are discouraged and they are looking for where their passion lies. So the way it is being presented, you still need to go back and do some work and see how you're going to work around it. And there is another thing we need to do. You don't just pull people out. Car, come, oh, come, come, come and learn trade. Come and learn trade. When I was going to school, the understanding that I was given as a child is that if I come out, I'm going to occupy one big position with one fine tie and so on. Now I came out, there is no job. And because there is no job, you have just created one thing for me. The first thing that we come to my psyche is that that thing is not meant for me. And the societal value comes in too. How do society look at those things? So the first thing we need to do is reorientation of everyone in the society. Letting everyone know if you are a carpenter, you are by the roadside, you are as useful as the man that is tying putting all time in one big oil company. If that orientation is not there, then you are making me to feel inferior. It's like, why did our technical school drop? If we can recall, because it's part of this vocation that we are talking about now. Even you, then, if you were told to send your child to technical school, will you agree? You will say, where is university? <laughs> that was what happened. So every parent now wanted to feel, oh, my child too can go to university. Because those that came out of the technical schools were looked down upon. They were seen as those that never do well, that were into vocational training, which was not really true. I remember I had somebody then in the village who went to technical school. I was still in school, he came out, he learned this electrical thing. He was in money. They were calling him everywhere. I was still in school. He has bought car, married, and the rest of them. But the moment you are making them less important, who wants to be there? That is where our problem started from in Nigeria. That everybody wants the child to read medicine. My child should go and read law. My child should go and read engineering. Is that not it? Hello? Yes, ma. Rice, are you still there? Yes. Hello, I can hear you, ma. It's only yes. recently yes, now. I'm here, ma. It's only recently now. I think people are getting to have small, small understanding, no full understanding yet. Before, it's abnormal for your child to walk to you as an educated person to say, I want to go and read music. Look at all these jesters that are making money from their comedy. 
football. Do you know that those days you cannot leave your children to job? Won't you go and carry your book and read while you're playing football? So if you have to plan the educational system, there is a lot to be done. So if you want to find out why is this not succeeding, I've given you a leverage. So because it's seminar, you cannot take a part of it. Prepare for your seminar. You can take a whole of it okay. for your main work. I don't know if okay. what I'm saying is making sense. Yes, ma. Yes, ma. So I want your comments. Let's look at final comments before we wrap up the class. Any question? Thank you very much, ma, for the observation. I want to ask. So, in light of what you have said now, can I assess? Can I just? assess and the entrepreneur skills uh, like maybe like the skill acquisition centers they are like you taught us now they are already doing the the hard skills uh, let me assess the, the 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 amount of soft skills that they have been that they are, no that, in this that, case that they acquire in this, case, the, the in this case you can look at the perception you can look at the perception of graduates from the entrepreneurial, uh, I don't know what you call them, centers. Okay. Because you want to see their perception. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. You can yes, look at their perception because from what you have said, that you have a lot of them, they have finished. I don't know, did you give them money to start? Yes, yes, they gave them, I think, 1.5 million each. Uh, but they gave them money and so they even used the money to travel. And some yeah, of them yeah, have yeah. yeah. money to some other things, isn't it? Yes. So yes, what we now need to do is to find out their perception about that program. Okay. Because their perception will help to improve on the program. Okay. If you look at their perception, if you don't want to look at their perception, then you can do evaluation of those programs. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying now? Because when yes, you are evaluating the program, before those programs were set up, there was a reason. The reason yes. was to increase the number of um, maybe businesses, I don't know, and in quotes now, they use the word entrepreneurs, in maybe in data state where you are. Now, if you are evaluating, you want to know how successful are those skills. If, for example, in a training section or in a training period, you have already a marked that you want to turn out 30, uh, students with skills, and actually you turn out the thirty, and out of the thirty, and the total thirty, you get the one point five, one point five million each, and out of the thirty with the one point five million, only two went to the field. Others, maybe three or ten, have traveled abroad. The others, they are even doing another job. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Now. Yes, ma'am. So from yes, ma what you said. How many of such skills do you have in debt? <coughs> uh, uh, we have a. Let me not give. Let me not give. Let, I will get the accurate figure. But I know okay. we have two here in Asaba. We have one in. Uh, okay, don't worry. So in that case, do evaluation of those skills. Okay, okay, okay. Ma because it's when you do the evaluation to know where are they succeeding, mm. is it meeting the purpose? Because you would have given. I don't know if you get what I'm saying now. Yes, it I do, I do. If it's not meeting it, why is it not meeting it? Where are the gaps? What needs to be done? Okay. So you can do that. I'll go on evaluation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So are we communicating? Good. Yes, ma'am. Very yes. Please. Now, yes. the next thing we need to do, today is Wednesday. Tomorrow is Thursday. Yes. Because by Friday, we'll wrap up this class. Okay. We'll wrap up this class. But please make sure you visit your course page. Okay. Make sure you visit your course page and do what you need to do. Now, the aspect, another thing that I want us to quickly look at, how to write your seminar paper. Now, okay. it's coming up with the heading we've been discussing since yesterday. If you have known the heading, now you have a focus, you know what you are going to do now. How do you go about it? How do you start your writing? First, you will have an introduction. That will be the first heading you will have. 
Within that introduction, you would have talked about the background. You are not going to put name, background. Introduction okay. is the heading. But yeah. within the introduction, you will give us a little brief of what led to the topic you are to okay. discuss. Now, you will, from without introduction too, you would have been able to bring out the gap that exists, that is making you to carry out that research. Whether it's theoretical, whether it's empirical, it's the same thing. Then if possible, you can even raise some research question or hypothesis if you are doing a paper. A paper. If it's a paper, don't go to hypothesis, just research questions. Okay. That your literature will help you to answer. Answer. Because remember, you are going to review a lot of empirical studies that have been carried out. And they will all yes. have their findings in the areas yes. you want to work on. Yes. Now you go further to tell us the way you have done that, you cannot come up with the design you want to use. That well, you are going to review this, 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 this number. This is how you want to go about it. And from your review, you're going to come up with a position of what the review uh, directs. Now, come up with topics, subtopics now, because when you have generated your uh, questions, from there, you can generate subtopics. Is the subtopics that will help you to look for related literature. <coughs> that will help you look for related, excuse me, related literature that will help you uh, back up what you want to discuss. Now, when you are gathering your related literature, don't forget your references tab. Please, I want you to go and read APA references tab, because that is our referencing format. I don't know which edition is available now, but I know we have sixth edition. Okay. So go into it, and tomorrow, you're going to do something for me. You are going to present to me the referencing pattern you learned, where you are citing references within the body of your work. How do you cite it? Single author, two authors, three authors, more than three authors. Within the body of the work, how do you cite it? And when it now came to the referencing page, how will you cite them? You do that, rest. You will do that. Okay, then, Omale, you will come up and tell us how you will cite tables. E content. Where you have e content, how do you cite it? When you read something from news, listening to te from television, how do you cite it? A speech. Somebody makes a speech, and how will you cite it? Because there are different ways you need to cite your work while you are working. Because of the time, I think I will stop here since the rest have work to do. But tomorrow, let's join the class on time. Yes, ma'am. We yes, lost some time today. Sorry, well, because yes, of my agreement, it's agreement, and I don't want, <laughs> I want uh, the money to be coming in for Mr. Rest. <laughs> so we'll stop here. Thank you for your consideration, ma'am. <laughs> we'll stop the class Thank now. Thank you, ma'am. Is there any other question? Hey, ma, please, I don't know. I was, uh, I, I was discussing with uh, one of our colleagues yesterday. Uh, because I came late, I couldn't make the appeal. And uh, uh, she was asking for assistance in other courses. I said, I won't be chance that we will study course, we have study class with you. She asked, I said, it's a, it's a research, the seminar stuff. Uh, she's a lady in the technical, edu tech. Because up to now, she doesn't know who she's under. At least those in admin know that it's uh, Dr. Gundira, but oh, she knows nothing. So she was asking if she can join the class. I said I will ask you first. Let her okay, join. Okay, ma'am. 
Okay, man. Okay, so I'll give her the I'll you, give her the link to join her tomorrow. Uh, because she's not enrolled. Are you getting what I'm saying? She's not enrolled in that class. She will uh, not be able to join from the course page. But send her the link. Okay. The link, yes, I'll okay, do that. Send link. her the link so that she can join yeah. from the link. Is that for me? Thank you, man. Is that okay? Okay. So Thank see you tomorrow by eight. God's willing. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Thank you very much. Bye.